Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and today we are going to be discussing the answers to quiz number 3 posted in the endogyny training group. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, please visit endogynetraining.com to join the WhatsApp discussion group where we post and discuss questions related to everyday practice as regards gyne endoscopic surgery. So with that, let us go on and see what was the question that was posted. But before that, our standard disclaimer that medicine is not an exact science and these views are my personal opinions. They may be different from conventional teaching. Uh, please leave your views in the comment section below the video and we will be happy to discuss them in the group. And if you have a difficult or interesting case, we would love to discuss it in the group. So please send us the images on endogynetraining at gmail.com. So with that, let us come to the question which was asked. And the question was, is this uterus septate or arcuate? And the second question was, does she need surgery? So this is a follow-up of the previous HFG that we posted and we already had a discussion about septate versus biconvate uterus. For those of you who missed that discussion, I am including the link in the comment section below where you can go and see those older videos. So let's see how people have responded. Among the entire group, 43% uh, people felt that this was a septate uterus and 56% felt that it was an arcuate uterus and 58% voted for uh, that surgery is not required for this patient and 41% voted that surgery is required. So clearly as a group also we are uh, quite divided about the opinion of surgery and then it becomes that much more difficult for the patient to choose because the patient is going to be guided by various doctors who are going to give us give her conflicting opinions. So let's see, uh, let's take a look at the HSG and the 3D film which was posted in the group before we make any decisions as to whether surgery is So if we look at this film carefully, you can see that there is an indentation in the midline. So there clearly is a depression, there clearly is an abnormality. Uh, the only question remains whether it is an arcuate uterus or a septate uterus. So in order to answer that, First, it is important to remember that like a septate uterus versus a biconvate uterus cannot be definitively diagnosed on an HSG. We do require a 3D ultrasound to definitively diagnose a septate uterus versus an arcuate uterus as well. So uh, if only this part of the picture was given, the HSG film, that would be insufficient for us uh, to find out whether or not this is an arcuate uterus or a septate uterus. Then how exactly does one find out whether this given uterus is an arcuate or a septate? We require the coronal section in a 3D ultrasound in which certain measurements have to be taken. So on the 3D ultrasound, the sonologist draws a line from one ostium to the other ostium. So the sonologist draws the interosteal line. If I were to mark it here, the line from one ostium to the other ostium is drawn. And the distance below that line up till the tip of the septum is measured and the distance above that line uh, up till the maximum point of the fundus is measured. So these are the two measurements which are taken starting from the interosteal line which is the line joining the two ostia. So what exactly does qualify as a septate uterus versus an arcuate uterus? There are two different classification systems which are given all over the world and which are followed. The first one, this one is the ASRM or the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, which says that the septal length has to be more than one centimeter. If we are talking about a septate uterus, the septal length, this length has to be more than one centimeter and the septum angle has to be less than 90 degrees to call it a septate uterus versus an arcuate uterus where the length will be less than 1 cm. Again, from the interosteal line, you can see that the interosteal line is drawn in dotted red over here and the angle will be more than 90 degrees. So that is what ASRM says. However, the ASHRAE or the CONUTA classification, which is another classification, states that it is not possible to quantify the length of the septum because different women of different ethnicities may have 
different length of septa depending on the size of their uteri. And so what they recommend is that rather than having absolute measurements of uh, what the size of the septum should be, they recommend that one draw and the interosteal line from one ostium to the other ostium. And once this line is drawn, you measure the length of the septum below and the length of the septum above, much the same way as we discussed in the last diagram. And if the length of the septum below, that means if the length of this part is more than 50% the thickness of the fundus above the interosteal line, that means this part, then she can, she can be said to have a septum. So if this length A is more than 50% of this length B, then she can be said to have a septum and then uh, this is the patient who will require surgery. So I hope the definition, distinction between septate uterus and arcuate uterus is clear. Now coming to the fact whether she actually requires surgery or not. So this answer is actually in a grey zone and cannot be given completely till the um, complete details of the patient are actually given to us. The reason being that if this were a very young patient who has not adequately tried for fertility, uh, a septum per se is not something which acts as an all or none phenomenon. So the presence of a septum will not 100% cause the patient not to get pregnant. And it can be said the other way around also that if a patient is actively considering fertility treatment, then any abnormalities like a septate uterus should be tackled immediately. So to sum it up in one line, if this is a patient where all other factors of uh, septum have been, uh, all other factors of infertility have been excluded, then yes, I would go ahead and cut this septum. But if it is not excluded and if she is a young patient, then purely attributed to one single finding of a septate uterus, I would not consider doing surgery and operating upon this patient. Coming to finally concluding as to whether this is a septate or bicornuate uterus, I can see over here that this distance on 3D ultrasound appears to be more than 50% of this distance above the interosteal line. So my diagnosis would be that this is a septate uterus and not a bicornuate uterus. And if it is a septate uterus and she has had adequate trials of getting pregnant, adequate trials of planned relations, maybe ovulation induction, and still has not been able to achieve a pregnancy, then rather than doing nothing, or if she is a candidate who is going to go in for an IVF cycle later on, I would rather err on the side of caution and trim this septate uterus or incise the septum rather than leave it alone and have the patient undergo multiple IVF failures. And after that, correcting the septum will be a little bit too late in the day. I would rather correct it before that before a trial of subsequent fertility treatment is given. So I hope that makes things a bit clear. Um, please keep following us on the group for more interesting discussions and updates and visit endogynetraining.com if you are keen to join the group and uh, participate in the discussions. Thank you very much for your patience and for listening.